Before we dive into the Shia Moisture experiment, I wanted to share something very interesting with you. I did an Instagram poll recently asking how many people have used Shia Moisture products and a whopping over 90% people said yes. And then I got so many DMs on that story saying that it didn't work for them, the product, the brand didn't work for them. So I was curious about their texture and I asked, okay, can you tell me what is your texture? And a majority of them said they had looser, finer texture. So curious, I, want, I went back to my story and added one more poll saying, okay, those who said that sheer moisture products didn't work for you, what is your texture? So over 60% said they had fine texture and 40% said coarse texture. Now, if sheer moisture products didn't work for you, you need to watch this video till the end. Hi, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. In today's video, we're going to talk about something a little bit personal for me and something that's risky for me also. If you haven't noticed, in, in my previous video of the curly hair journey, I mentioned that I, I was dealing with coconut oil sensitivity. While my hair is in a much better place, my skin still suffers and gets like these painful breakouts whenever I use products with coconut oil. Although I have some reservations, I was feeling a bit nostalgic and I was willing to try these sheer moisture products that are so easily available in Doha. And luckily one of my clients generously <laughs> gave them to me to review them again. So stick around to see what happens. A few years ago, my postpartum hair became really sensitive to coconut oil. It would make my hair frizzy, dull, stiff and brittle from day one. It was challenging for me to use all the hair products and hair oils that, that my hair was used to and then to find products that actually worked for me. It's been nearly four years since that first discovery and I find that my hair is changing, my body is changing, I'm evolving. It could be that my postpartum body is back or it also could be that I'm getting older. <laughs> so gradually my hair is becoming more tolerant of coconut oil again. As a general rule, I limit myself to just one product with coconut oil. If I have a routine of four products, only one product will have coconut oil. That's and that has been working for me. But today, I want to try these Shia Moisture products and all of them have coconut oil in them. Before we dive into the coconut oil experiment, I want to tell you about the products that have worked for me that have a little bit of coconut oil, especially from brands like Trelux and Buklem. And I found that these products with coconut oil worked really well for me when I had color treated hair and bleached hair. It's fascinating to know how coconut oil can be so beneficial for color treated hair. As a South Indian, I've always been aware of the benefits of coconut oil. We also cook in coconut oil and I've never hesitated to not use products with coconut oil. But as a beginner in the curly hair journey, I found out that using hair products with coconut oil back to back to back actually gave me a lot of hormonal acne uh, it was painful and it was it was just unbearable at the time but i didn't know that it was the hair products that was causing it So whenever possible, if you are hypersensitive to coconut oil, use products without coconut oil. An easy way to know is uh, to go on this website called isitcg.com. You can copy paste ingredients of uh, products over there and immediately it will tell you whether this product has coconut oil. And another way to know if a product has coconut oil is to read the labels. But if you are someone who's stuck with products with coconut oil, you already purchased them, you don't know what to do, you don't want to throw them away, then here are a few tips on how to manage your hair products with your coconut oil sensitivity.
I don't know about you, but whenever I used to use coconut oil during my sensitivity, my hair would frizz. It would become brittle. It would become like really unmanageable. So in order to get back to my normal hair, a thorough detox was necessary. So if you are using hair products with coconut oil, and if you if you notice that your hair is just so unmanageable and there's this frizz that just doesn't go away and maybe it's time for you to detox your hair there are a few ways to do it you can either do a diy detox cleanse with clay treatment or you could do apple cider vinegar both of these guides are there on my website they are free and you could also if you want get shampoos that are formulated to remove buildup like that and use that shampoo every time you use hair products with coconut oil so that your hair starts on a clean slate. As for me, I moved to the Middle East and it's really hard to find the clay uh, over here and as much as I want to detox my hair using the clay, it's hard to access it and that is why you'll see me using, uh, for the majority of time, I would use coconut oil free products only. So whenever possible, either use Go Coconut Oil Free or detox your hair to remove buildup. It's important to check your coconut sensitivity from time to time because you don't want to lose out on all the yummy hair products with coconut oil. Also, you never know, like, especially for me, in my case, I find that over the years, my coconut sensitivity is going down. When it started, my hair was frizzy and brittle in, on day one. But now, you're looking at my hair. This is my third day hair using coconut oil products. Just for fun, to put my theory to the test, I decided to jump in on Shea Moisture products. These are very easily available in Doha. And I'll be using their shampoo, their conditioner, the mousse, and their gel even though it's a higher risk move for my skin in 2016 when i first began my curly hair journey i remember buying this product the first time around the smell of it the texture the the whole experience takes me back to that little apartment to my life with my little ones at the time but i also remember that it it did not work for me at the time or maybe because i was a beginner i didn't know how to use it and it felt terrible for me and it was a terrible disappointment because imagine paying like <laughs> four thousand or imagine paying so much for one hair product and it doesn't work for you it it is truly disappointing and then by the time i did discover the clay treatment and I was detoxing my hair often and my I was using better products. But by the time that happened, I had already formed these opinions in my head about the Shea Moisture brand. I believe that this brand, it was taken over by a multinational corporation. So they are only in for profits and that's why they're compromising on their ingredients. And that's why they start some hair products and then, and then they discontinue it after some time or they have these big marketing budgets so they can have these crazy curly events and give out these free hair products so that everybody is using them and suddenly it's trending. So these were just my opinions. My opinions are not facts. It was just all in my head, I guess. Uh, so this was a time when I had already formed those opinions about Shea Moisture and I stopped using that brand. And we were living in a cancel culture. <laughs> 2017 2018 was like everybody was cancelling everything um, but uh, that's when I went in to support small businesses run by women and I had my fair share of bad experiences there also well you have to watch my curly hair journey video to get the tea on that now that we're deep diving into the Shea Moisture experiment I first need you to consider your texture this line of products is specifically formulated for thick hair and it says, says so on the label. So before you buy hair products for yourself, it's really important that you read the label, read the description on 
the company website to make sure that this product is for your texture i was telling you about the polls that i did on instagram and majority of the people for whom shea moisture brand didn't work had finer texture and looser texture so understanding your texture and buying hair products based on that is key to get results and if you're not sure what products to buy and what is your texture i cover that extensively in my one on ones and also my online curly hair course so now let's get back to my review the shampoo this is so creamy and thick you can think of this shampoo as a co-wash it did not lather for me the first time I believe that's likely because I had other hair products and other brands in my hair so it it did not work with those other brands so therefore it didn't lather as much but when I tried it on my daughter's hair I have three daughters two of them have wavy hair one of them has like a swirly hair I mean so I experiment on their hair also and they don't use so many products like I do So when I used this shampoo on their hair, it lathered immediately. So it made me think that if the shampoo doesn't lather at the first go, you want to double cleanse, and also you want to use that shampoo with the products that it's formulated with and for. So if you use this one shampoo, don't cocktail it with other brands. Use it with the same line of hair products. The conditioner of this line is my favorite of all the products the conditioner is my favorite because my hair got really really uh, tangled and i i just started using this hairspray and this hairspray has like sls in it and maybe that's why it's drying my hair out i'm not sure yet but because of the hairspray thing my hair gets really tangled and dry by the end of like day 4 day 5 hair So so it's really hard for me to detangle my hair in the shower but using this conditioner really saved a lot of time. When I did those Shea Moisture stories on my Instagram, I got a really useful DM and she suggested that I use the products not straight from the bottle. So I took that advice and I took like about two pumps of this and really emulsified in my hand and then applied it on my really really wet hair and i did the same thing with the styling products also i first applied the mousse the the mousse has a relatively okay slip uh, for me it it didn't have like that amazing slip of all the other mousses that i usually use and i think that's because of the protein content in it and my hair is i can say that it's sensitive to protein like it doesn't behave like the same way like how the protein free or minimal protein products work so products with high protein it's very difficult for my hands to slip through my hair So this one is like that for me. It could be different for you if you have fine hair or if you have wavy texture then this mousse could be really useful for you. I didn't find it as useful and and after applying this I applied this custard gel. It's like a gel souffle. And when I uh, took it in my and the texture is nothing like i have ever tried before i i mean i have i love other gels that i use i'll link them in the description and those gels are not like this at all this is like it's thin and it forms like a film over your hands like and it's really sticky and it's like you know how your hands feel after you applied oil in your hair you know how your hands feel they feel moisturized and but they also feel like there's a coating on it so that's how this gel feels like for me so at first when i used these two together it did not work my hair like practically died on the first day but 
it looked better the next day and it felt really light so i think when you use products that are so lightweight like this mousse or like this watery oily lightweight gel then you can expect your hair to feel lightweight but because it was so lightweight the curls didn't really stay like especially my this area it frizzes out like really fast but today if you see it's not frizzing out and that's only because i introduced a protein free coconut oil free product in it so i applied a hair cream and then i layered the mousse on, on top of this then i layered the gel on top of that so it was cream mousse gel and that cream mousse gel or leave-in mousse and gel this order of application always works for my texture and i have thick coarse hair and as you can see it's like it's shining and i have the volume and this is day three hair so it's practically a win i'll say so if you've ever faced any challenge working with shea moisture products for your hair or if you're stuck with shea moisture products in your cupboard <laughs> as a curly girl who shops a lot don't worry you could either emulsify it really well don't use it straight out of the bottle emulsify it really well with water and use it in your hair that's soaking wet or you could mix and match that is introduce one element that's not so heavy with coconut oil or protein so introduce something that's protein free and coconut oil free like i did it might just make all the difference especially if you have thick coarse hair like mine if you have really fine hair or like looser texture or like lesser density maybe don't use a brand that is formulated for thicker textures or or higher density thicker hair remember to read your labels and if you want more personalized guidance then you can book a one on one with me or enroll in my online curly hair course where i can teach you how to buy products based on your texture and how to mix products and what kind of techniques you you can use for your hair texture specifically your journey is unique and i'm here to help you Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video tutorial of how I styled my hair with the Shea Moisture products. Also comment if you want to know the mystery cream that I used with this lineup to get these results. I hope this journey through coconut oil sensitivity and finding the right products for you was insightful. Remember our hair is unique so experimenting is key to know what works best for you. If you had similar experiences drop them in the comments so I can read about it. Remember to like this video and subscribe for more honest hair content. I'll see you in the next video.